49 again. This is the one and only Pack Girl 89, and I am finally doing my book nerding and discussion on the third book of the Starcross series, which is Goddess by Josephine Angelini. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, this is the final book at the Packer Girl. This is the final book in the Starcross series. No, 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 no. This is not the final book because I tweeted Josephine Angelini because I've been doing that a lot lately with um these with uh, my uh, my favorite authors on Twitter since I've been a lot more active on Twitter uh since uh, September and uh and she said no there's going to be a, at least a fourth book and I told and um, I told Josephine I tweeted Josephine that I think that there should be at least three more three Sorry, three more books in the Starcross series, and I will explain why at, hold on a second, three more books, and I'll explain why at the end, of, probably near the end of the video, and um, maybe four, depending on how the books are written, because, and I'll explain why. And um, and I did that with Karsten Knight's book, I did explain that at the end of Afterglow, uh, my Afterglow video, so... Let's get to it. So, um, at the end of Dreamless, we had um, Helen sent Ares to Tartarus after um, the blood of all the houses united and unleashed the gods. And um, Zach and Automedon are killed because Automedon had the same weakness as Achilles, which was the heel. And it was... Um, it was crazy. You know, it was really crazy. And the one thing I gotta say I like about the series a lot is, and this is something that Roridan doesn't have, is that the gods care. The gods are true, more true to their nature in this series than they are in Rick Roridan's books. They're a lot darker. They're and it's more like God of War meets the, the um, Heroes of Olympus series and Percy Jackson series, and I like it. And Hades' character is more consistent, and Hades is more sympathetic, and that's what Hades is supposed to be. Is he's supposed to be sympathetic, and you know, he's he. It makes you think about your decisions and your morals, and he's supposed to do that. Um, it's, but he help he helps question Helen, and what I thought was really. And what I thought was cool is, I think I mentioned it in my um, Dreamless with Nerdigan video, is that Hades' Shadow Master skill got through the House of Thieves because he had a child with Morgan Le Fay, who is another descender. And um, Hel poor Helen, we see Helen has echoes of her past because she um, gave the Fates water from the River Leaf. And if you remember, you can't you can't even remember, mention the river leave without forgetting everything. And um, and uh, Ashlyn is similar, like Ashlyn having echoes of Pele past. So that's what's happening to Helen because you know she um, got the water from the river leaf for the fates, or for the not the fates, sorry, the furies. Excuse me, I'm having a rough time right now. <laughs> And so she's seeing echoes of her past. So she sees the first Helen from Troy, and she was getting abused and stoned and beaten, and she still can't die because she's a scion. And um, and Aphro Sister Aphrodite steps in, and I like Aphrodite in this book. She's not Aphrodite in this book is so loving, and she's not shallow at all like Aphrodite in Roden's book. Where was Aphrodite? Where was this Aphrodite, Roden? Seriously. And sorry, Karsten, where was Aphrodite? Where was this Aphrodite, Karsten? Oh, seriously. Um, she steps in and she says uh, to the citizens of, I think she, this was in Troy, she says, I abandon this place. No man shall feel desire and no woman shall bear fruit. You will all die unloved and childless. And she brings uh, Helen onto uh, Paris's ship. And she says, um, where is it? 
As long as my sister and her line of daughters last, there will be love in the world. I swear it on the river Styx. But if you let my sister die, Hector of Troy, son of Apollo, I will leave this world and take my love itself away with me. And um, as I mentioned, you know, the gods are staying true to their nature. And some styles can shapeshift into their god animal's avatar. And so Jason can shapeshift into a dolphin, which is what Apollo is which is unfair, we're, 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 again, where was this roared in? Eagle is a Zeus, and Poseidon slash Orion is a horse, and again, where was this roared, um, roared in? And where was this Karsten? We didn't have this either. And we have a new, we have a siren in this series, another one, yes, we do. And that's Andy, who is attempted to get raped by Apollo, yes. Apollo is an asshole in this book. He's a, he's an no, annoying jerk in Roaring in series. He's an asshole in this series. And I love what Hector said in this book. Some of the lines Hector says in this book are funny. So it's Larry, Moe, and Curly to the rescue. He rescue, Hector said, rubbing his forehead. I love it. Um, something really sad that happened in the last book that gets brought up is Hergy is dead and of course he died trying to save the books. And Andy is part siren and we learn um a lot about sirens, about how like siren mothers uh, treat their children, they really don't care about their children at all. It's really sad. And Hephaestus is erupting volcanoes around the world and again, Borden Karsten, what was this? You didn't get this at all in your books. <laughs> didn't get this at all. Where was this? Jeez. Call me Arceus. We didn't get this at all. Let's see. And then this is really important. This this line. Did you uh, did you also know that every generation has a handful of specific characters to get repeated over and over? So like Helen from Helen from Helen of Troy, Paris is Lucas, Hector is Hector of Troy, etc. Cassandra, Cassandra of Troy, Orion is Adonis, etc. Um, it will get repeated over and over. Um, they are almost exact replicas of the main characters who fought at Troy. And then we also have Matt, who is um, who is Achilles. Etc. As soon as an Aridine is uh, an important character as well. As soon as one of these main characters die, another is born to take his or her place. Helen, uh, when Helen and um, Lucas and Orion became blood brothers, Helen got all of Lucas and Orion's talents, and I think it has something to do with her being a daughter of Zeus. I think that's why. And she even got earth shaking, and she, in the sense, became the tyrant. Which is really weird. She wasn't supposed to be, according to the prophecy. Let's see. Because you have a talent in common with me and with Morpheus and Zeus, to name a few, this is what Hades said. He, he said firmly, each of us can make one world. Um, I made Hades, this is what Hades said. I made Hades, Morpheus made the Shadowlands, the Furies made the Drylands, Zeus made Olympus, and Tartarus created Tartarus eons before any of us existed. And Tartarus left the boundaries of her land open um, for all who share in this power. So Tartarus is a her. Or did you didn't get that right either. What gives? Um, although none of us have ever seen her. So let me get this straight. Warden, you got this wrong. Tartarus is a her. What the commune Arceus is wrong with the Warden. All right, so you are a world. This is this is all coming from Hades. Keep this in mind. You are a world world builder, Helen. You have the power to sculpt a land for whomever you wish to enter it. This is pretty badass right here. A world of your own that abides enter entirely by your rules. Eternal youth, fulfillment, or eternal trials and suffering. Whatever you think will serve will serve best. Morgan in Atlanta, who uh, one created Avalon. Avalon? If you guys know fairy mythology, that's what Avalon is. And the other Atlantis. Atlantis? Hmm. Isn't that what the demigod wants? The science wants? Yes, yes it is. Both their worlds dissolved in the mist or beneath the waves when their creators were defeated. But science uh, remember those lands to this day, especially Atlantis. They die for it still. 
Wait, you're saying that Lannis doesn't exist? Not anymore. Every world builder must be able to defend his or her lands against any challenger. Morgan and Atlanta both lost. So wait a second. So, so Avalon was demigods. So Avalon wasn't fake. What? 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 So Avalon wasn't land of fake? I'm confused. Everything I've ever learned about Faye has been a lie. Something is not right. Um, the prophecy has been fulfilled. The houses are one, Helen. Hades took her hand between both of his, cradling them in warmth. You will raise Atlantis or Avalon or Helena, whatever you wish to call it. Um, and once your world is made, you can decide who may enter it. Who must stay or go and how you each inhabitant experiences your land. It really is up to you. That's too much for one person. Oh my god, yes. It, 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 it's pretty badass that Helen can create her own land. And of course she calls it every land. Yes, yeah, she does. And what's really sad is Orion's mom suffers from insanity. But it's really sweet that her and, because, uh, you know, Orion, uh, Helen flies and takes Orion to visit, you know, his, his, her parent, his parents, because, you know, the fury spells over and whatnot, the blood jets are over. So they visit, and it's so sweet that Orion's dad is still, is still with his mom, even though her, his mom is insane, because his mom killed um, her brother, because her brother tried to kill Orion, and, and it's sweet that, you know, they're still together. It's really, really sweet. Let's see. And there's the zombie tyrant Huzzah Death! <laughs> I thought that was so funny. And then Orion blinds the face. I thought that was so badass, because, um, it has something to do, um, something to do with the past, because Nemesis, uh, um, blinded the fates uh, with Aeneas because Aeneas was with uh, Cassandra of Troy. I thought that was awesome. And and Helen and then we saw Helen's <laughs> then we saw Helen's Echo with uh, um as Guinevere with Lancelot and how that turned from PG thirteen to read it out really fast. I started cracking up. I was like, Wow, dirty 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 and then here we go. It's true that the Romans have spilled so much blood into the sands of co the Colosseum that the Furies lost track of the blood debt. It's a cursed place. Oh, okay. That's, that's good to know. And then we have the Lucas, Orion, Hector bromance. Yes, the bromance is real. It's as real as the Percy Jace bromance. It, it, it's, they call each other bro and everything. And then we have Helen's the leader. Hector's the champion. And then Orion is Cassandra or Kitty. Yes. Cassandra is Orion's is Orion's kitty. Oh, that was so cute. They're so cute together, Orion and, and Cassandra. They're so adorable. And now oh, he wants to put a little bit in me. Orion made a little bell for Cassandra. That was so cute. It doesn't matter that the Furies are gone. You you um all still act like a pack of wild dogs. Everybody's got to sniff each other's butt. Oh, that line was so funny from Noelle. I love Noelle. She's great. Um, the House of Atreus is descended from Zeus, so it's the highest ranking. We joined the group second to last, so that's according to Daphne. So yeah, and, and then um, Cassandra is because she's the host of. The Fates, she goes in last. So, yeah, last is the Oracle. And this is interesting about Daphne. Whatever was left of my feelings for, you know, her feelings for Ajax. Because, you know, she, um, Ajax was killed by Tantalus. Um, where is it? I traded in order to accomplish a goal. Women, women do it all the time. Scion women swear it before her Kate. Kate is very important in this book. And it's weird because Hecate's never mentioned in any of the other books. Hecate's mentioned just in this book. And Hecate, I think, is going to be, um, Josephine, um, Josie said she's going to use Hecate in her fourth book, but I think Hecate is going to be used, uh, should be used in all, in the next three books that she does for the series. Helen shocks Luke at, um, what happens is that Helen, accidentally electrocutes Lucas and she ends up because she vows that she says she's not going to build the world and she ends up building every land for him because she almost kills Lucas or she kind of kills Lucas and she 
ends up building every land for him, which I think is sweet, and she um, makes it so that, you know, like, the world heals Lucas and makes him almost immortal, but she gives it, it makes it so that um, Lucas can choose to die, and she ends up bringing everyone, like, all her friends and family there, except for Daphne, and I think for Castor as well, and, um, and Aerodine, she doesn't bring Aerodine either, and, um, and so eventually they will get to choose to die, which is pretty sweet. I'm going to do that. So we have, um, we have Hector saves Andy from Apollo, which it was pretty sweet because, um, Andy was Andrew Mash in the, um, previous life in Troy. And it was so sweet because from Matt, because Matt is, you know, now he's Achilles, so he, he, he sees them as reunited as, um, Hector and Andrew Mash. And um, and he sees as the tyrant must die, and he sees Helen as the tyrant. She willed the sunshine to take its pain. This is how um, she describes uh, every land. How Helen is, you know, healing the pain uh, away from Lucas. So she willed the sunshine to take his pain away, the air to heal his wounds, and the ground to nourish him, so he didn't need food or water. In seconds, Lucas was healthy and perfect again. His eyes fluttered open and locked with hers, and Helen's whole world was um, in him. And this is how she described every land. It's like New York, Vienna, and Red Vivac had, had a baby with Scotland. And then we have the warrior has finally joined the, joined the fight, which is Tantalus, head of thieves. And Morgan Le Fay built Avalon and disappeared in the mist when she lost her fight. Atlanta sank into the sea when Atlanta lost hers. And Atlanta, by the way, is the daughter of Paris and um, Helen. Hecate, here we go. Hecate, Lucas mumbled, once the duel starts, stops, starts, nothing can stop. She'll keep any um, interference away, especially uninvited mortals. Okay, Rorden, seriously, where was this? We didn't see this in any freaking Percy Jackson book or in any freaking um, Hero of Olympus book. Where was this? Seriously. And then, oh, then we saw Aphrodite appear and it was so sweet. That little reunion was really sweet. And then I loved when Poseidon and Aphrodite and the, and the bet happened. It was like, seriously, way to ruin the moment, Poseidon. Seriously. Poseidon was an ass. And then um, they're saying that Lucas would, uh, because uh, the Scions were going to be replacing the gods in the demigod um, god war, and they were originally saying Lucas was going to replace Poseidon, and Hector was going to replace Apollo, and then Zeus appears, and he actually calls Helen daughter, which is kind of weird to me, because Jerry is really her dad, so yeah, it's just weird. And the gods can try to kill Scions with the ocean, um, with ocean waves and lightning bolts and curses, but they are not allowed to participate in one-on-one -on -one combat with us unless they're mortal as well. And I thought that was weird. And then we have Matt versus Hector, and Matt kills Hector, but Lucas ends up, um, Lucas kills Matt. Uh, Matt kills Hector originally, and then, um, it, which was crazy. And then Giggles ends up being a traitor, and if you don't know, Claire, that Giggles is Claire. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And then we have Hector and Andy, hashtag Hetty, because, you know, um, Andy tried to stop it. And then Hector's dad curse you, freaking, no, that was so bad. And now Helen knows, it was so crazy. And then there was the change of heart. And Lucas, is, Lucas went to go replace Hades because of, um, Hector, or because of the whole Helen thing, and then Final Judgment, he uh, saves Hector, but you know, when ha Final Judgment, he will, Lucas will have to come back someday, but the thing is, is that, you know, um, Daphne tells Helen that, you know, Lucas isn't really her cousin, and um, uh, Helen goes down to Hades and saves him, and you know, Get convinces Hades, you know, convinces the fates that you know Lucas isn't worthy, worthy of it, and you know Lucas will have to come back someday. And that's uh, why I said that's one. I think that would be one book right there, is you know a final judgment, or it could be included in one of the three books. And uh, Tantalus and Daphne are dead because 
because Tantalus is on the opposing army, and Daphne, you know, because they have the power of changing faces, uh, Tantalus disguises herself as Daphne, um, and duels, you know, does the offering to Hecate, and duels Tantalus, and kills Tantalus, tricks Tantalus, kills Tantalus, and then dies. That was so awesome. And then, uh, where are we here? And then, um, oh man, this video is getting really long. I don't want to have to do part two. I'm sorry. It's going to be a long ass video. And then we got the release the crack. Then Poseidon releases the Kraken, which is crazy. Don't worry. It's going to be worth it. Then we got release the Kraken. Do I want to do it? Yes. Yeah. So we had a, he releases the Kraken, and then Helen, I love when Helen trapped Zeus. That was freaking insane. So Helen made a deal with Zeus, right, to, um, she was going to give him every land if she, as long as Zeus didn't, as long as Zeus didn't attack her friends anymore. So... And, you know, Matt's already dead and everything like that. So, Zeus, she traps Zeus in every land in her head. So, basically, as long as Helen is alive, Zeus cannot attack her. So, yeah. And, but the thing is, though, in order for her to duel Zeus and everything, she had to promise three tasks to the Kate. Matt was their deal. So this is my idea for um, for the next three books for for just for just Fiend. and this is what and you know this was our Trojan horse for felt lots of this away was her Trojan horse for Zeus, for Zeus but anyway this is my idea for Josephine Angelina's next three books is to write each book be a task for her Kate that Helen has to do with Lucas and then maybe in the last book for her last task is when. Um, you know, Hecate, uh, like, maybe, like, in the second half of the last book is when, um, Lucas has to do his, uh, task for Hades. And that's my idea. Is there anything else? Oh, I love this part. I have to say this part before I forget. So, like, after Zeus is trapped, I love what Athena says. I love what she says to do. She says, welcome to my Trojan horse. She said with a tight smile, enjoy. You're going to be stuck inside it for eternity. And then I love what Athena says. She sa Athena says she defeated Zeus, Athena announced. Helen could have sworn she saw a smile, a uh, small smile to tilt up the edges of Aphrodite's lo um, lovely mouth before she school schooled it straight again. Poseidon, I'm calling you out. Get in the ring. And if... if and if one of you even breathes on a mortal the wrong way, I swear I'll hunt you down and send you to Tartarus. Now get in the ring, Poseidon, or I'll, for, or I'll forfeit this fight. Take you, take all your smelling, or forfeit this fight. Take all your smelly monsters and get the hell away from my family. And they left, and I loved it. I, I just loved, I loved how the reaction of Athena and Aphrodite. They're just badass. I, I just loved that. I loved it. And then I like that um, Helen had the, you know, the minor gods help them. I mean, Hip Helen had tapped Hypnos with rebuilding the worst cases, hypnotizing them into remembering the whole thing as something else, and Castor is the new head. And the thing is, is with, uh, you know, with the new books for, uh, like, a villain or something, or, you know, an antagonist, is Aridine was is starting to pull away from the family. So what I told, what I tweeted Josephine, was that, you know, Aerivine could be, you know, because she was so loyal to Matt, because she was in love with Matt, that she could be working against Helen, in a way. That's what I was thinking, but, yeah. Yeah, so El Helen has three tasks that she has to do for Kate. And, you know, Josephine, hit me up. I mean, I, I can help you. If you want me to help, I can actually do research for you on um, possibly, like, you know, tasks that Kate has had others do in the past. Um, and, uh, and same with uh, Hades' tasks as well. So, anyway, that's what, those are my thoughts on uh, Goddess by Justine Angelini, and now what's your turn, what was your favorite part, and let me know what you guys think about, because I, I kind of, if you noticed, this ran along, because I was kind of comparing it to, um, uh, Royden's books and Karsten Knight's books, 
Because if you haven't noticed, I kind of tend to do that. That's kind of the book nerdigan way. And you know, notice there was a little frustration there. So please like, comment, share, subscribe. Let out your frustration in the comments section if you are. And let your book nerd again angst about mythology books too. <laughs> and until next time, book nerdigans, keep on reading.